I have a Fitbit scale and on the bottom are the four feet that it sits on and if the plastic mount that holds those feet on is broken I'll show you how to replace that. So the first thing I'm going to do is flip it over and remove the battery cover and the batteries. And then I'm going to remove these two small screws. So the next thing I'm going to do is pry the back off. And you want to be very careful not to break this glass top. So you want to use a tool such as this and get in between the back plastic and the top and just pry that open. I'm going to show you in here if you're prying it open you can see what appears to be glue in there that holds the glass on. You don't want to pry that open. You should be in between this back piece and a little plastic piece there. So again where you see the glue or glass in there you'll damage it. So, so be sure and pry these two pieces apart. It helps if you have multiple tools that you can leave in there as you're going around and prying it open just to hold it open so they don't snap back shut. And then you also want to be careful as you're prying in here so you don't damage any of the electronics inside of here. So now with the back cover pried off of there, I just want to show you again where you should not be prying is between this glass and this inner plastic right in here. So if you're prying that apart and you can see some glue, then that's the wrong area. You want to take the cover off that goes on top of here. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of what this looks like when it's apart so you know what areas to pry on to get it apart. On the bottom of the scale there are these pins and these correspond to these towers and the top half. They're just pressed in there. And so that's what you want to pry apart. So you actually when you're prying it's not out here but actually in here farther that you have to pry on to get this open. So when you're prying, this is the back end of the scale, and there's two here, and there's two more pins up front, and then two on either side. So when you're prying on these, there's a Wi-Fi antenna in between them, so you want to make sure you stay out here and don't pry in that area. There's also one in each corner by the feet, but you want to be careful not to pry and damage these or any of this the wires or these delicate electronic components in here. But this will just give you an idea what you have to do to pry it open. And you can see this one is flopping around a little and it is broken. And so is this one. So I'm going to take these apart and replace this plastic piece. On either side of this plastic piece, there's this little clip. So there's one on this side and one on this side. So I'm just going to pry those open and pop this off. There's a little coil wire on here and I'm just going to slide that out to the slot in the plastic part. And 
and then this little metal disc here. I'm going to slip that out of there. And then I'm going to remove this foot. There's three little clips in here. Just pry those open and it'll pop off. So there's three different ways you could fix this. In one you could try to super glue where this is broken or you could buy a used scale for parts and take them out of there and a third option would be to 3D print one and I think I'm going to go that route. On Thingiverse.com someone has uploaded a model that can be 3D printed. So I'm just going to download this model and print a couple new ones. If you're not familiar with 3D printing, once you've downloaded the part, then you open it with a program that slices it into layers for 3D printing. And then you can run a simulation to see what it will look like as it's being 3D printed. And it just builds it layer by layer. And then the support structure needs to be removed from the 3D printed part. And this can be kind of tedious to do. Especially on a part that's somewhat fragile like this. And now in less than an hour I have a replacement part. I'm going to put one of the feet back on to the newly made part. And you can see on the feet there are three clips. The three clips on the feet go over on these three spots. And they have to go over this little rib and clip on to here to be all the way on. So you line this clip on the foot with this little groove in here. Line those three up and then just pinch, push that together. until it snaps on. On the bottom of this plastic piece and on the side of this circle there's a little slot here where that round disc goes. So you want to put that disc through this area and then place it in here. And then next, this little rubber ring goes on top of the disc. When you step on the scale, it compresses this rubber ring, allowing this metal disc to touch on here, completing a circuit, and that's what wakes up the scale. And then put this coiled wire through this same slot, and it goes over this cone, with the wire laying into this little groove. I've used this screwdriver to just push a little of this plastic into that groove to hold this wire in so it won't pop out. And then you can just flip this piece over, make sure that all this stays in place, 
and these two clips will clip into these two slots. And that should just snap into place with the wires running out from this side. And here I have the other side assembled and I'm going to do the same thing, just snap it in place. I think the reason that these feet get broken, or these plastic pieces on the back side of the scale is at some times when you're setting up the scale you're asked to push down or tap on the back end or bottom end of the scale and you want to push down directly above that foot. And that's will compress that rubber ring which then makes contact. If you push out here too far, what you're doing is tilting the scale up and you can see how that would put stress on that plastic piece because it's having to bend instead of going straight down.